Good morning, everyone. Um, right, the stress starts. Everybody's here. Uh, first of all, you look at me and think, oh, no, some CEO has turned up. He's in a tie. doesn't fit in. And you're right. And that's one of the very first things that I need to change. So hopefully you remember this. Now, why am I making a point of, of taking, taking this tie off? Um, because it doesn't fit. It doesn't fit here. Um, I'll be honest, I wasn't sure what to wear um, because I wasn't 100% sure what the audience was going to be. So I was prepared for a tie just in case. Um, but this goes, and you'll see this throughout, throughout my presentation, you need to be part of your team. That's the most important thing. If I come out here in a, in a, in a shirt and tie and all stiff, that's not your style. I don't see a single tie here in the audience. So straight away, I've, there's, there's, there's a distance. Straight away, there's, there's almost a, a lack of um, uh, honesty in, in, in this relationship. So that's the first thing you always have to, have to remember. Understand your team. Understand what's important to your team. And be on level with them. Um, so that's, that's the first thing. I, I did a previous, uh, previous presentation where I stripped down a little bit more down to a t-shirt. Um, but um, I didn't do it this time. I thought that was a bit too much. Um, OK. There is no I in team, but there is in win. Um, I was just going to paste over this and move on and not say anything about this. And I got a phone call yesterday uh, from a friend of mine who saw that I was presenting. And he said, what does that mean? I said, it's obvious. And he said, no, it's not obvious. And it made me realize there is nothing that's ever obvious. Okay, Don't ever presume, because presumption is the mother of all <coughs> screw-ups. Um, so it's, it's very, very obvious to me, because I've grown up uh, being in sports. I've grown up with this, with this term. Um, many, many times I've heard from our coaches who've said there is no I in team. And the whole point was, in the word team, there is no word I, so it's always team. You always think about team, team, and not about yourself. And all the guys used to always joke, yeah, yeah, but there is a win. So if you want to win, there's got to be I in that. Um, both of these are true. Um, there is an I in every single uh, in every single win. In order to win, yes, you do have to have individuals. Um, so this is the, the 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 connection between between sort of my talk building teams and the entire conference because we can't separate ourselves from our customers, whoever they may be, whether it's internal customers, external customers, partners, whoever else, we can't just, just um, uh, completely separate. We need to work together, okay? But not f forgetting that there is always an I. The person you're talking to is not just a robot. It's not just somebody without feelings. You always need to consider them as an individual in every single relationship. And that's why the I is always important, even in the ultimate teams. So, why me? Who am I? What, why, or why here? Well, actually, before we move on to that, um, building and leading winning teams is what I'm going to talk about today. This splits into three, three parts, and they're very important. There's the building, there's the leading, and there's the winning. Okay? Three completely different things, and that's how my, my presentation is going to now um, be, be split up into these three things. Um, and hopefully you'll have three key takeaways, because any more than three, three takeaways is far too many. Then that means I've just bored the crap out of you, and you won't remember anything. So hopefully you'll just remember three key things at the end of this presentation. And a fourth one that, that I took a tie off, um, hopefully. Right, um, so who am I? Why am I here? What do I know about Teams? Uh, this is going to sound like um, I'm showing off, but that's me, OK? <clears throat> Why is this important? I wanted to visually show you what do I know about Teams. I've I'm a scout leader. I'm a scout master. Um, I have the highest rank in the, in the Polish scouting organization, which is Harris Mies. I have won two jamborees, world jamborees, and built two of the best scout teams, uh, scout troops in, uh, in our organization. I'm also a coach of an American football team. I won a championship uh, last year with the, with the Krakow Kings. Um, so that's outside of business. And in business, I've set up companies such as EPAM. I don't know if any of you know EPAM in Krakow. It's quite a big outsource, and now I believe they're up to about 1,000 people. I was, I was the very first employee of EPAM in Krakow. I, I, I set them up. <coughs> I was also one of the first employees of SolarWinds. That's, a, that's another software company here in Krakow. Um, I, I worked at IBM, and I set up the, the biggest, currently the biggest European project, which is um, the, the Allianz project, uh, which now is up to about 800 people. Um, 
it's not about showing off. It's just simply, I suppose, building credibility to some way. I've built many, many teams. So um, it's not about saying how great I am. It's about trying to pass on some of these things that I've learned from building teams so that you can implement this. It makes no difference whether it's a troop of 16, 16 kids, or whether it's a team of 60 players, or whether it's a company of one, two, three, four hundred or a thousand people. Okay, it's all the same. Okay, people are people. Um, individuals are individuals, and building a team is building a team. And as long as you remember the three aspects that I'm going to talk about today, it should be a success. So, winning, building, and leading. The very, very, very first thing is we start from the back. We start with a win. Okay, in order to win in order to be successful, in order to build a winning team, what do we need to do first? We need to define what's a win. What do we want to achieve with this team? Because if we don't have a definition of, of a win, if we don't have a definition the definition of success, we're never going to reach it. Okay? So that's the very, very first thing. A tangible um, goal, what are you trying to do? Okay? So what is your goal? What is the company's goal? <coughs> Um, and what is your team's goal? Okay. Now, here is a very interesting part. These goals can be different and most probably will be different. The goals that you set, or the, and th these don't ha necessarily have to be written goals, the, the, the long-term success can be different from the members of, for the members of your team and from you, or from your bosses or your clients and so on. One of the examples I use is in sports. Um, as a coach, and I'll never say this to any of my players, and I hope nobody tells them, um, a championship isn't necessarily my goal. That's not necessarily my aim for, the, for, for, for what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to educate. I'm using sports to educate and to make changes in people's lives to make their lives better. Um, for players, what's their goal? To win a game and to win a championship, full stop. That's the most important thing to them. Um, so our goals are a little bit different. We s we're still going in the same direction. The general idea is the same. We, yes, we want to be a successful team. We want to win, win the championship and win games. But my focus is a little bit different. I, I really want to, uh, want to develop these young men um, and, and, and set a, a particular culture in their life so they, can, so they can be positive members of the community. Um, sometimes these goals are hard defined and you tell your team, but sometimes you, you simply know yourself what, what, these, what these goals are. It's not a problem that your goals are a little bit different from your team. It's not a problem. And they almost should be different, okay? Because you, you think on a slightly, slightly higher level. So this is very, very important. Define what is winning. And this goes further. This goes into every single relationship that you have with a client, internal or external with a customer, internal or external, okay? It's important, you should define what you're trying to do. Every meeting should have a reason, okay? I had a fabulous year at IBM when I was there. Brilliant, meeting upon meeting upon meeting. Any purpose for those meetings? <laughs> Not really, apart from sitting in a meeting and typing on the same time to somebody else because you're bored, because you don't know the aim of that meeting, okay? It's insulting to all the members of that meeting. Let's set a reason to sit down and to talk. Let's set a reason for this conversation. Let's set a reason for this uh, for this project, and let's set a a goal. Okay. If you don't have a goal, then what's the point? Let's just go and have a coffee. But then again, having a coffee is, also has a goal. You want to get to know somebody. Um, Gosha, as you mentioned, they don't don't just sit there with with people from your own company. Network. That's also a goal. It's important to meet people to learn new things and to have new experiences, okay? So that's the first thing, define winning. Very, very important, okay? Then we move on to um, uh, defining culture. Okay. It's very, very important that you define what culture you're going to have within the company. Um, are you, and within the company, within the team, within the group, within a team, no matter at what level you're, you're, you're setting things up. Um, and I'm not saying any of these are right or wrong. Every situation is different. Sometimes you're going to have a collaborative team, sometimes, uh, and it's going to be uh, s uh, led in a collaborative way. Sometimes it's going to be authoritarian. Okay. A lot of times people say, "Oh, authoritarian? No, no, no. We don't want to be part of that. Okay. We want to be part of a team that collaborates." Sometimes no. Sometimes there's a need for an authoritarian. Um, uh, 
leadership style in order to, to, uh, for, for a particular goal to be achieved. And also depends on how you build that team. And this is something you need to consider when you're building that team. How, what culture you will have. Same thing when you're starting, um, a, uh, uh, when you're taking over a team. And that's very important. Most of the time when you're taking over a, a, a team, a group, a company, whatever it may be, you need to change that culture. Because usually when you're coming in, there's a reason why you're coming in. Usually the previous person, for whatever reason, left. So you need to change that culture to, for, to, to fit your style, your ideas. So that's very important. Agile versus waterfall. Um, I don't want to go into the, the whole definitions of what is agile, what is waterfall. I'm talking more about the general mindset. Is your team going to be led in an agile way or, an, or going to work in an agile way or in a waterfall way? Okay. And this depends on, and again, don't go into, oh, it's got to be waterfall because that's the sexiest thing right now. Everybody in Krakow is doing water, is agile, so I've got to do agile. No, this might, this might not work in your particular um, project, in your particular style, or even the team that you built. Your team might not be suited, uh, or your project might not be suited to, to agile. So you need to define that. First, when you're building, you need to define that. And also, uh, and I wrote here Scrum versus Specialization. Um, Probably all the true Agile people will probably disagree that this is not the way to define things. It's just a message they want to send. Um, are you going to allow your team to work in a, in, a, in a scrum type way where essentially the idea is that anybody can grab any piece of work? Okay? You can build a team in which anybody can grab something. Okay? Here's 10 things that we need to do. Who's doing what? And there isn't a pure specialization, or you can set a team in a co completely opposite way, okay? You do this, you do this, you do this. Don't, you know, you're, you're doing, you're doing, I don't know, let's say content is your, is your thing, nobody else touches it, okay? That might be the way that you want your team, it might, it might not be, okay? Consider that at the beginning, beginning consider that when, you, when, you, when you're running it, consider that in your goal definition, which way to run a team. Neither of them is wrong. Okay, both are correct in the correct environment, in the correct place. Both of them are completely wrong in the wrong environment, in the wrong place. Okay, so remember that. And in all of this, look at your individuals, look at your people, talk to your people and find out whether they can fit into this system or not. Okay, building. Okay, that's the next part. So we got to when we're building us, we've defined our goal. We know what we want. We know how we uh, roughly we want to we want to run, uh, run our team or structure our team. Now let's let's put it together. Okay, so there are two things. There's the team stru uh, structure plan and recruitment. Okay, so how is your team going to look? Okay, and this is something you need to decide at the very beginning. Am I going to have all juniors? Is it going to be all seniors? Is it going to be a mix of seniority or is it going to be a mix of skills? Um, I'm very lucky that all of these things, basically everything that you see here in this presentation is not from books, okay? None of these things I've read in books, none of these things are designed by other authors. These are simply experiences that I've had throughout my life and I've been very, very lucky. The reason why I showed you the pictures of, of scouting, I took over a scout trip when I was 13. Uh, and I ran a scout trip for, for eight years and I rebuilt it from, there was basically two of us when I, when I took over and I rebuilt it into, into 20, 25 kids. Um, so all of these things at some point I've learned, whether it's in sports, in business, um, or, or, in, uh, um, or in, in scouting, uh, in, in many different things. And in, in the scouting movement, there's two different ways of having a scout troop. The way Baden-Powell originally uh, wrote in his, in his book is that a, um, uh, in Polish it's called a Zastamp, um, I forget what it's called, a pack in, um, in the scouts. It's meant to be a, a group of six, let's say six to eight kids, and they're meant to be the same age, and they th go throughout their sort of life in the scouting movement together, okay? So that's one way of doing things, okay? You could get a team that's good, that's are all juniors, let's say fresh out of university, and you coach them and, and they, they sort of progress together throughout, um, throughout their career. That's one way of doing things. Another way of doing things in the scouts, is, which was modified a little bit later on, because uh, the scouts were designed to be in, s in schools mostly. So you have kids that are of the same age in the same class that then sort of progress, progress together. Um, it evolved into a mix where sometimes in some schools they didn't have enough kids to form a, a, a full pack, so they started having a mix where you had one older kid who was essentially a team leader, 
um, the, the pack leader, and then his sort of um, vice vice leader, and then and then a couple of seniors, and, the, and then juniors, a complete mix, which is more of a structure the way we sort of do things in companies. We have juniors, seniors, and so on. Again, you need to decide what you want in your team and how you want to structure your team. Neither is correct, neither uh, neither is wrong, depending on on the situation, okay? Both can be of great success. One thing you do have to remember, if you have all seniors, then none of them are seniors, okay? That's something people quite often forget. In order to feel that you're a senior, you need to have somebody next to you who's more junior to you. Even if you don't, they don't report to you, even if you don't give them any orders, just the sheer fact that you have more experience and you can mentor them in some way makes you feel like a, like a senior. If all of you are seniors, then you're just seniors on paper and you all actually feel like juniors. Okay, so you need to remember that in, in when, you, when, you, when you lead, um, lead teams. The other one is, uh, uh, will there be a mix of skills? Is it going to be a team that's just one skill? Is it going to be all programmers of one programming type and that's it? Or are you going to have a, a tester within your team? Are you going to have a, an architect within your team? Are you going to have a, um, a content uh, writing team? Are you going to have a technical writer within your team? It all, it all, all depends. Are you going to have gra graphic artists within your team? Okay? This is something that you need to consider at the very beginning. Um, all of these people speak completely different languages. Um, how many programmers here in the room? Okay, very, very few. Um, most of you probably, how many of you have worked with programmers? Okay, easy, right? They completely understand everything you say to them, right? No, it's a complete nightmare, okay? It's a completely different world. Um, programmers are incredibly arrogant, okay? Um, I'm a programmer, so I can say that. Um, I, uh, well, I studied programming and that I gave up very quickly. They're, they're incredibly arrogant. They believe that you don't know programming, therefore you're an idiot. Okay? How many times have you felt that, speaking to a programmer? Hands up. Thank you. Okay? I certainly felt it. Okay? I've seen a situation where, 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 a, where a programmer or, a, or, an, or an IT guy has basically called the CEO of a company an idiot because he didn't, because he didn't know how to do something on his computer. Okay? So we need to consider that, that we're going to have that, that as part of our team, okay? Doesn't make it bad, it's just we need to consider that and it changes the way we're going to run that team, okay? The other thing is the team structure. How are we going to structure the team? Is it going to be flat or is it going to be a pyramid, okay? Very, very important. Are you going to have, a, like I mentioned, a, a, a leader, then, a, then, then his replacement, then a senior, then a senior, then a junior, or is it going to be very, very flat and everybody reports to you, okay? Very, very important to consider at the beginning. Not during, not when you've already recruited people, but at the beginning and recruit the right people so that they, they fit your style. None of these things are bad. If you decide that you want to run a team in a very flat structure, everybody reports to you, that doesn't make you a bad manager, okay? Just because somebody wrote somewhere that it needs to be done differently, it needs to be all collaborative. No, for this particular project, it might not work, or for your style, it might not work. As long as you have the right people around you that will work within that system, then that's what works. Then, so you've decided on that. You've decided what your goal is. You've decided what your team, uh, what your team structure is going to be. Now is the recruitment. Okay, easiest part. Okay, recruitment is easy. Um, I, I, I smile when I say this. Um, I'm very lucky. I, I don't know what it is, but I've got this this knack that I feel people when I when I speak to somebody in a in, a, in, a, in an interview, um, I feel whether I'm going to want to work with them or not. How does that happen? Because to me. Um, Skills can be learned. Personality, no. You are who you are, and you're not going to change as a person, and I'm not going to try and change you as a person, okay? I'm going to try and help you um, maybe develop, but you are who you are. And that's why I find it something that I digress, and I will digress again. I find it really interesting when I see couples, and I see one person in a relationship trying to change the other. Why bother? Get somebody else, okay? Get a girl that you really like or get a guy that you really like that fits your needs. Don't try to spend your whole life changing them, okay? Same thing here, okay? So um, I have the 30-minute rule, and this is one of the uh, things that I hope that you'll remember. If I can't have a conversation, a conversation, not a um, can you do this, can you do this, but a conversation in an interview, if I can't have that for 30 minutes, don't employ that person, okay? I've got to be able to talk to them. Because think about it, you're going to spend time with this person. You're going to be 
sitting around a table, you know, trying to figure out strategy. You're gonna try to figure out how to how to solve this difficult project. If you can't have a simple conversation during an interview, how are you gonna collaborate later on down the line? Or oh, suddenly miraculously gonna build a relationship? Mm, probably not. Okay, it's probably always gonna be an uphill struggle. Okay. Same thing in personal relationships, right? If you're gonna you're gonna have a, a partner, how does it start? It starts with a conversation. You know, you can talk for the, you know whether it's in the bar in a in the park or wherever you met that person. You started by talking, and you thought, oh, this conversation is going well. I want to talk to this person more. Same thing in interview. If you can talk to them for half an hour, great. Then you've got a chance. Get the technical aspect out of the way first. Maybe somebody else will do the technical interview. Make sure that that's done, and then spend time just simply talking to the person. Everybody laughed. Whenever I do an interview, if somebody walks out after 50 minutes, they know there's no chance of them being, being employed. No chance. The longer, I hope nobody finds that out, because no, actually, it's just, it's just, it makes no difference you know, how, you, how you walk into the interview. If we can simply talk, the conversation will flow. And about any topic, there's no problem in digressing onto non work topics during an interview. Okay? Because this is life. Uh, we're, we draw the line between, between work and, and, and personal life far, far too much. Okay? It's your life. It's who you are. We shouldn't be a different person at work than we are in our personal lives. We shouldn't. Okay? At some point, you'll forget which one you are. And the wrong person will come into the wrong environment. Okay? And that could be dangerous. Okay? Um, second one is personality. Okay? Uh, well, second one. The primary one is personality. And I've got this note here. River versus stream. Uh, and hopefully you'll remember this, this analogy. When you're building a team at the very, very beginning, think of it as a tiny stream of water that when you come in and stick your foot in it, the water has to flow around your foot. Okay? That's what can happen with a strong personality entering your team. If there is... If it's a small company, if it's a startup, if you have 10 people, 15 people, think about it. One person coming in, that's 10% of your company. Okay, That's 15% of your company, potentially. Okay, That person can really impact your team and your company. Okay, When you have a lot of people, when you're already an established company, then it's a river. You stick your foot in a river, the water ignores your foot and just flows over it. Okay, Remember that. A wrong hire will completely change the culture of your company. You can't afford that, okay? So don't take that risk. So make sure that person fits your personality, make sure they fit your team, okay? I believe, and this is, please don't put it on Twitter, I believe in complete discrimination when it comes to employment, okay? You know who you want, what type of person that you want, and that's who you need to employ, okay? If you're not feeling that person, don't employ them. I don't agree in discrimination afterwards. Once that person is in, then you've got to be completely fair, okay? Uh, I'll give you an example. I love employing women as part of a team of programmers, mainly because they start washing, okay? Seriously. <laughs> I can see that difference. When, the, when it's all guys in a, in, in, in a team, they come in scruffy and they don't really care. Suddenly, when there's a lady part of the team, it's a different culture, okay? Completely different, okay? A lot more positive, okay? It's little things like that you need to remember, okay? All these things have an impact, okay? Do not discriminate when, when somebody's in. That's important. I'll, I'll go on to that in a minute. But you need to feel, you, you know what you need as part of your team. You know what, what you're lacking, what type of personality. So bring that in, okay? Right, now the last thing, the easy part, right? Leading the team, okay? Um, I put up this, this, this thing. This is a new slide I've added to, to this. Uh, for those of you that don't speak, uh, speak Polish, pokaż nas się stać, ale nie tylko raz. Show me what you can achieve, but not just once, okay? What's the idea of this? With, with my American football team, I've, um, I give a helmet decals to players, and you can see these decals here, um, each, of these, each of these stickers that they get onto the helmet, for individual achievements, okay? American football is the, the ultimate team sport, okay? Nothing can be done on your own, it really is. You need all, e all 11 guys working in sync, blocking for each other and, and doing various things in order for, for it to succeed. One superstar will not win a game, okay? So how can I be focusing on individual achievements in the ultimate team sport? Because individual achievements build a team and build that success. They're like bricks. Individual bricks will build a strong 
house. So I focus on these things and each of these individual achievements will make us stronger as a team. It's the same thing in business, okay? Individual achievements, individual successes will make the team stronger, okay? When you're speaking to, in a difficult situation, when a client calls and he's all annoyed, that one person speaking to the client in the right way calming them down, getting all the information out of their accounts and assuring them that it's going to be fixed, that individual achievement of a positive conversation has an impact on the entire team. Award them for that, okay? They've done something that will now help the entire team because they could have just said, yeah, okay, we'll fix it when we fix it, okay? And then the team is going to, have, is going to be an uphill struggle. And it's individual um, responsibility that has an impact on the entire team. Okay, one bug, one error, one typo has an impact on the entire product. Okay, and we all know this. I'm sure you found holes in my presentation. Being considering what what you guys do, th these aren't the sexiest presentations, but they do have an impact on the way you do. Because you find you find one error, you start start looking for others. You start thinking, oh, well, is this thing really as bulletproof as they told me? Okay, so individual um, responsibility makes a difference. Whenever you can, award your individuals for this. This system is proven over and over again. The scouting movement works in exactly the same way. Merit badges, okay? Individual merit badges. You see a, a guy next to you who's got a lot of badges. Oh, I, want to, I, want to, I want those too. And he works harder to get those. In my team, it works perfectly. Okay, the guys have instant respect. They see somebody who's got a lot of uh, a lot of hammer decals. Okay, this must be a good player. I want to I want to work at his level. Same thing at a company. Uh, a lot of companies uh, call it in different ways. They have kudos points or kudos awards. Okay, if somebody does something well, give them something. Whether it's a sticker, whether it's a chocolate bar, whether it's a um, a, a monetary reward, whatever. They don't have to be hard monetary rewards. Sometimes a little tiny thing um, really makes a difference. I. When I was running a, um, a halls of residence, I set up a, a puzzle, okay? And each team, there was a picture of every single, every single team, and every time they did something right, um, they got a piece of that puzzle. And, they, and that puzzle was, was being built over the year. It got, it got built bigger and bigger. And it was a, an internal rivalry in order to build the puzzle first, but in order to build it, they had to do positive things, and, and, they, and they got those things awarded. So they could see these things piecing together, okay? didn't cost me anything to put this together, but it really motivated them. You don't always have to motivate people with money, okay? It's a short-term motivator quite a lot, and very often money is just a way to hide things or to paste over things that are bigger problems, okay? Appreciate people for their individual achievements, small things, and they'll appreciate you for the fact that you noticed. Okay, leading team, presumption of competence. This is my... My methodology, my approach to, to leading people, and I strongly advise that you try and try and do this too. Uh, checks and balances, not micromanagement. Okay? I always say to people, you're here because you're good. No, you're here because you're awesome. Okay? I believe in you, I want to work with you, you're part of my team. Usually the way I build a team is I always surround myself with people that do things better than me. Okay? There's, there's always an aspect, I'm not perfect by any stretch of imagination, Nightmare. But putting a presentation together for me is the hardest thing that I that, that, that I can say. So I always try and have somebody near me that can that can put it. I can correct the presentation, okay. But putting one together from scratch is very very difficult for me. So I always try and have somebody that 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 can do that well. And all of us have have things that we don't do well. Surround yourself with people that do those things better, and then as a team you can do things uh, together. But make sure you tell people that they're there because they're valuable and let them do it, okay. Um, very often I've seen a situation where, uh, you know, we employ a great, great new programmer. He's, he's brilliant, but they don't let him program. Or you need to find out about the system. You need to, you know, before we let you check any code in, you, you need to see. So why six rounds of interviews? Okay. It's like, I've gone through all these rounds of interviews. I'm brilliant. You've told me that I'm great because you've given me a job. And now I've got to sit on the bench for six months because you don't really trust me to do any work. Come on. If they're that good, let them, let them play. Analogy from sports. If you're going to buy a player, that's excellent. If you're going to buy Lewandowski, are you going to have him sitting on a bench for six months while he learns the system? No. You're going to let him play from the first match because you know he's good. Okay? Let them do it. And also, this goes back to... Well, that's why I said don't, don't, uh, don't let your best player sit on the bench. Also, recruit in the right way. Why recruit a superstar if your product isn't really that difficult? The amount of times I've seen a situation where, yeah, we need the absolute best programmers. Why? 
it's a database that you pull things from a database and you show it on the screen. It's not rocket science. Why do you want the best programmer? Do you have great plans that you're going to expand this project product in great? No, well, no, we don't. But we need the best programmers. No, you don't, because he's going to quit after two months because he's going to be bored. Okay. Hire the right, the correct people, okay, for the correct job so they can find it passionate. Um, I firmly believe I don't, I never hire the perfect person for the job. Because if they're perfect for the job, then they should be going for the next job. If somebody's already led a team of 10 and has got all the experience of leading a team of 10, why would I hire them to run a team of 10? I hire them to run a team of 50. It's outside the comfort zone, it's, it's a challenge. They're going, to, they're going to appreciate the fact that somebody's given them the next chance and they're going to really work for it. Okay? If somebody's written uh, content just for a, small, for a small site, give them an entire portal. Show me what you can do. You've proven yourself in this one, now let's, let's work at a higher level. People will step up to the challenge. Trust me. Okay? Um, so that's presumption of competence. Trust people, let them do their work. Everybody wants to be trusted, everybody wants to, nobody wants to be micromanaged. Personal management responsibility. Um, culture fit first, tech second. And I mentioned this during, uh, uh, for the interview process. Um, technical, yeah, make sure that that's okay. Maybe get somebody else to, to check that part and then focus on culture. Make sure the person fits your culture. Now, here's my, my thing, and I've noticed people like, like when, I, when I say this. Firing is your fault, not the team members, okay? And this goes to my whole discrimination in, in firing. You're not allowed to discriminate, okay? It was your decision to hire this person, okay? If they leave the company, or if you have to fire them, it's your fault, not them, okay? You've either hired the wrong person, you didn't do the recruitment correctly, or you had the right person, but you did something wrong along the way to change that person's career path, to change that person's um, uh, options and things that they could do within the company. It's your responsibility as a manager, as a leader, to make sure that these people stay and to make sure that they have the right, the right path. If you've reached the end of the road and you can't offer them any more uh, developments because you know, they've, they're now a senior, they're doing everything great, and your, your product isn't going to expand more, and you see that, that they've hit it dead and you can't afford them anymore, okay, help them find something else, okay? Don't ever sever that relationship and let them walk away. Say to them, okay, cool, I see that we've reached it, and I see I can't, uh, uh, you can't develop anymore within our company, we just simply don't have those options, cool. Let's part ways, I'll help you. I have contacts, I, I know other people, I'll, I'll give you a recommendation, okay? You never know. Uh, what will happen when that person will come back, okay? But it's your responsibility. If you have to fire somebody, you've done something wrong at some point, okay? You either did a wrong hire at the very beginning, and that's your responsibility, because a person comes in and they simply say who they are. And it's for you to find out who they really are, make sure that you get the best out of them, okay? It's not about tripping them up. I, um, I went through a couple of rounds, I'm not gonna mention which company, a couple of rounds of interviews a, a while ago, and I noticed every single step of the interview was a question to trip me up. And after I think the third round, I thought to myself, I just don't want to be at this company. If that's all they do in these interviews is try and trip me up and find and show me what I don't know, then I don't want to be there. I just don't. Okay? I want to be at a place where they're going to value who I am and going to help me learn even more and not show me how bad I am. Okay? So, key takeaways. Just three, plus a tie. Okay? Winning, define your goal, okay? Most important thing, define your goal, define, define, define. Without this, you're gonna be lost, okay? You're not gonna know where you're going. Building, 30 minute rule. Talk to the person. If you can talk to them for half an hour during the interview, there's a good chance that you're going to, be work, uh, going to be able to work with them. Think about it, if you can go for a drink with them, if you can go for a coffee with them, the chance are you're gonna be able to work with them, okay? Uh, don't think that this is work, I'm never gonna go for a coffee with this person. Why wouldn't you want to go for a coffee with this person, okay? Um, think about how many ideas that you've come up with at work with somebody that you like, okay? Because you simply bounce each, uh, ideas off each other. If somebody that you don't really like, are you really gonna go, go to them and say, listen, I've had this funky idea, what do you think? It's not gonna happen, is it? So start that at the very beginning. Last one, leading. Firing is your fault, not the team members, okay? Remember, look after your people, these are individuals. IBM, great company, I had a great time there for a year. I left because people were just numbers in an Excel spreadsheet. I couldn't hack that, okay? I couldn't, I couldn't put people on a bell curve. I did that at the end of the year, I had to mark people and say, okay, 
five people are going to get the lowest mark, five people are going to get the highest mark, and everybody else in the middle. I couldn't do that, okay? These are individuals. Remember, everybody's an individual, everybody wants to be treated as an individual. You are the most important person in your life, and you want to be treated that way by your boss. Um, how much time do I have? Because I want to tell you a little story. I've got a little bit of time. Um, I was working in the States, and the owner of the company was, was, uh, was in England. They used to fly over once in a while, um, every month or so, in order to, to, to come for meetings to our, to our branch in, in, in the States. Uh, and he would have one-to-ones with every single person. We were a small company. We had 15 people, I think, maybe 20 people other, uh, in the company. So we tried to, tried to get through everybody and talk to everybody. And he always overran his time. You know, if he had 20 minutes, somebody always 25, 30 minutes. So and most people knew this. And there was one of the guys in my team was the very very last one on his slot. I think it was already four o'clock, and he was meant to speak to him. It was already four forty-five, and uh, the boss was still still talking to to the previous person. So I remember Anthony comes to me and says, "Listen, uh, there's no there's no chance Mo is going to talk to me today, is there?" I said, well, "Let me find out. I'll go and talk to talk to Mo." And I knew because I was driving Mo to the to the airport, so I knew what time his flight was. I knew he didn't have the time. Okay, he had a hard stop. I think at five five fifteen. I think really we had to leave. So I popped in and said, Mo, listen, there's one more guy um, that uh, that you need to see. He's a bit worried that you're not going to have time for him, and you don't. You've literally got 10 minutes, and we've got to go to the airport, otherwise you're going to miss your flight. I said, cool. I said, do you want me to cancel? No, 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 tell him to come in. All right. No chance you're going to do this in 10 minutes. Miss your flight, your money. The guy comes in, and Anthony straight away starts with, look, uh, Mo, you, I understand you've got to fly. I'm sorry. Sit down. Relax. Let's talk. Yeah, yeah but you go, listen, the flights, they can be changed. It's only money, okay? Let's talk. What's on your mind? He was out of there within five minutes, okay? But he felt the most important person ever, that the boss was prepared to move his flight for him, okay? And after that, everything else was, was, was irrelevant, okay? And at that point, I thought to myself, wow, I want to, that's how I want to treat people within my team, okay? So with that note, please treat your people in your team that way. Thank you. <laughs> Sorry, one more thing. Now you can get all your phones out. I'd really appreciate if you could um, give me some feedback because it's very, very important. Uh, I learn from every single presentation that I do. I learn, I learn from every single conversation. So if you could... Um, if you could log in, this is a SurveyMonkey um, uh, survey, so if you could just either take a picture of that, it will take you to the thing, or Google uh, N3IX0. Uh, I'd really appreciate it if you could fill in the quick survey. There's like four questions there. I want to know what you thought, whether I can improve this. If it was a waste of time, let me know, okay? And let me know why so I can, so I can change things. Uh, hopefully, hopefully it was positive. Any questions? Right, guys, that was David Ostranga, CEO at SKKSA. Thank you a lot. And I've got some little soapy things right here, and you know what that is. It's a reward for everyone who asks a question. And you definitely have some questions, but you are shy, so this is to encourage you to speak up. I've got a microphone here. Aga's got another one, and more soaps to give you, so shoot. So um, do you have any thoughts or advice for people building teams across countries, particularly across oceans? Oh, yeah, that's a fun one. Um, communication, communication, communication. Okay, that's the first one. Um, you know what? Culture. Uh, learn each other's cultures. That is one fundamental flaw that people always forget about. People always think, well, this is the way we work. Yeah, we'll, we'll figure it out. No. Even, I've noticed even in the States, people on the West Coast are completely different from the East Coast. Completely different culture of work. And it's one country. Okay? Um, take that into account. If you can, educate internally about the cultures that you're working with. Okay? It makes a huge difference when you understand what that particular culture has issues with. And it's not discrimination anyway, it's not racism, okay? Poland, for example, we have a huge issue with management. The distance that we have towards, towards our management is gigantic. Our language doesn't help, okay? Because um, for all of you that speak Polish, you know, uh, usually in Polish, the very first time you, you meet somebody, you, you don't straight away talk to them directly, you say, sir or madam, 
Okay, that immediately creates creates a. It's a beautiful language. I think it's one of the most beautiful languages there is. But it immediately creates creates a um, uh, a distance. In in English, most of the time you come in and say hi, John, and that's it. Okay. Sometimes and um, you say so, but very very rarely. So so there isn't that distance. So if you remember that, um, the amount of times I've had a situation where a guy flew over from from the states, met his team, everything's good. The CTR member came over, met his team, everybody said brilliant. He flies back, two people resigned. And he phones me up and goes, what happened? Everybody was happy. Why the hell did people leave? So why didn't they tell me? I said, because they're not going to tell you. You're the big boss that's come in. My problems are far, far too small in order to, to tell the big boss. You're just simply not going to, uh, not going to find out. Okay? So whenever you can, you need local leadership to find out what's going on and education about cultures. You need to understand what are the, what are the differences between your cultures. And that's the only, only way, the only way that, that, that I believe you can move forward. Hopefully that answers your question. Thank you, David. My name is Aaron. I think there's a lot of wisdom in what you had to say. Um, I want to challenge you on one thing. When you hire people you like, you tend to hire people like you. And that's one way we've ended up with companies that are full of white men in their 50s. Nothing personal. <laughs> <laughs> I, I happen to believe in, in, in diversity hiring and hiring people who make me a little bit uncomfortable sometimes. How important do you think that is and why? Okay, 37, not 50. Thank you. <laughs> um, you're, I see how that perception could have come out. Um, it's not about, no, definitely not. I do not hire people like me um, because I already have me. So what's the point of having me? I, I want somebody different. I always, and, and I said this a few times, I want people that um, complete the team, that do things better than me, okay? Um, I know what kind of personality I have, and I know that at first, people tend to think, whoa, I'll, um, maybe, maybe, maybe I won't, okay? Especially because I hold people accountable, okay? And pe a lot of people are uncomfortable with that. Um, so, so there is a distance. Once they find out, once they get closer, and they realize that I will do absolutely anything and everything for my team, uh, then it's different. So I understand that I always have, need to have in my team somebody who's going to be that bridge. Somebody is that, that's going to be a lot more approachable and that's going to be able to, to be that bridge between me and, and, and the rest of the rest of the, either the company or the team or, or what the case may be. Um, even in my Merck football team, you know, my, some of my assistant coaches are there. They channel the information to me that the guys don't, don't necessarily feel comfortable coming to me with. So um, diversity is incredibly important, I agree. I completely agree. That's why I said it in a joking way, and I hope that you remember, um, women in tech are so important. They change the way things are done. I remember the very first, uh, first woman that I hired in, in, in technology, she, wa she became the, ex the um, she happened to have a math degree. She became the expert in math. That was her thing. The one thing I've noticed with women in technology, because it's a male-dominated field, girls are a lot better. Because in order to get to that level, they really had to prove themselves out every single way. So whenever I can't give one an opportunity, I do it because I know they're going to be good. Okay, and it changes um, changes the perception, changes the approach of, of the team uh, when you when you have a when you have a girl that's around because she's a l usually a lot more meticulous and looks at it from a much more human point of view at whatever the project may be. Um, so that's that's very important. Um, Yes, different different approaches are very very important. Young, old, young, every that's that's incredibly important because it's very dangerous having an, a completely young team because they believe. I remember what I was like when I was when I was twenty. I I can change the world. I can do everything. I don't need to read any books. I know everything. No, I don't. Okay. The older I get, the more I realize that my mom was right. Okay, and she's always right. I was about 30 when I realized that she's, okay, she might not have run a company of a thousand people, but she knows, okay? Because it's simply, things come with experience. Okay, we have just one more minute. Somebody, a quick question? <laughs> Uh, 
Okay. For anybody that didn't hear, how do we how do we take the concept of of the helmet decals in a team into a company? How do we uh, how do we get programmers, for example, to you know to have some kind of a sticker? Because at first instance, they'll think that it's dumb. Um, you you need to find something that's that's kind of that's completely different. Um, uh, that they'll think at first they'll think, well, that's a bit wacky, um, but then they'll start appreciating. Um, they will appreciate it. The guys, there's going to be some guys that are going to mock it um, at the very beginning, but so what? Okay. Um, when you receive an award for something that you've done well, um, whether it's a pen and you have a collection of pens and you have more pens than anybody else, um, whatever it may be, oh, I'm done. Um, whatever it may be, it, it does work. It really does work. Um, but it's got to be something, something fun, something, something different. Um, don't be afraid to carry on with it. Okay. Uh, the worst thing that you can do is think, okay, well, three guys have said um, that this is this is silly. I'm going to stop. It's usually the most vocal people that will say that it's not good. That doesn't necessarily mean it's the voice of the whole team. And what are you really trying to do with this with these individual awards? You're trying to. Um, Reward the people that are the quietest, that sit in a corner, that do a fabulous job that nobody ever recognizes. Okay, the value of them being appreciated is far more than the loud person not appreciating that this system is good. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, David, a lot. Thank you very much.